Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Aurora 4X C Sharp uh, 2.1. Now before we begin, because I kind of sort of, you know, forgot about it last time because we were focused on other more important issues, generally speaking, uh, we technically speaking should have run an election at the end of uh, last year. Or like, what is it, six seven months into what technically should have been the next, you know, administration. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, of course, because there are three people running, <clears throat> nobody is ever capable of actually getting, you know, over 50% of the uh, vote down here to choose the next president. Or, well, we use the term president. It technically says a chancellor there, but whatever. So we're going to go ahead and run this three times just to make sure that the person who's supposed to get cut doesn't change at all, and it doesn't, so we're going to go ahead and cut them. We'll then run the election a couple more times just so we can get what the house is. And technically, the new leader, as of 2143 to whenever the hell they actually end up out of office, is Carmen Yu. So she would be in office until 2147, and then depending upon if she gets re-election then, which is probably going to be the case, because none of our guys have ever technically lost re-election, and that's largely just because events and things up here don't really change and this is mostly just for background stuff so yeah she'll probably win re-election is a relatively safe bet and so would end up uh what staying until what like 21 12 is that or excuse me, not 2112, but uh, what, 2151 or 52, something like that? Yeah, whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter right now. We'll take care of it when it becomes relevant. In the meantime, let me go ahead and get my timer started, and we have a more important thing to actually take care of right now. Uh, and realistically, I should have done it more so off screen, but this is generally a case of finalizing updates to some of our designs. The biggest one is copying the class for the troop transports because we are going to go ahead and actually slap a tiny bit of armor on them. I'm thinking three. So we need to go ahead and free up about 800 tons of supplies now the question also becomes do i want to use troop transport bays or do i want to switch them to drop bays drop bays are heavier by about about a thousand tons each however troops are offloaded significantly faster so i'm a little bit inclined to go with that and i think we are going to do that we're going to go ahead and call this the 2143 Alamo. So let's go ahead and yeah, we're going to do drop bays. I know, game. I'm not allowed to have multiple. Whoops. Just get rid of the normal bays. There we go. Uh, the engine doesn't change because we're still using magnetic fusion engines. Okay, there is, I think the obvious thing is probably just to downgrade the amount they carry because I can't remove that 3,000 tons or 10,000 tons if I were to keep them with nine bays. So we're going to go ahead and just drop two bays. And drop some fuel because we don't need nearly that much.
Um, well, in that case, so that gives me 406 days with four of those. And it's still 406 days with just a single very large tank. Uh, what can I do to get me like a year? And hopefully not uh, become too big. Okay, that that's fine. Theoretically, if I wanted to add an extra engine, how would that play out? A little too heavy. So not really an option. And I can't give you... Oh, no, I can. I can give you smaller... Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, so I can give you smaller drop bays as well, just to try to get you to where I want you. So that leaves me with about 60 tons of wiggle room. I don't really have much to use 60 tons for. So I think we'll just go ahead and slap a little bit of extra fuel. So this has a fair bit less troop capacity per troop transport, but that's fine. I don't mind if I need to have extra to be able to load up. But now they actually have a little bit of, you know, real protection on them. So we're going to go with this. I'm going to go ahead and refit the bay here. Beckett Systems, retool for the 2143. I am going to also tell Owen's Shipbuilding to go ahead and do a continuous upgrade to 70,000. That way they're big enough to build the next generation carrier whenever we actually get around to implementing it. So go ahead and get them working on that so we don't need to worry about it. Um, I think the next thing was a lot of looking at the freighters. Yes, because I think the big thing was we want them to be a bit more fuel efficient, potentially. Uh, but the main thing is getting the destroyer escort out. And I don't have anybody who can do that unless I swap Sioux Manufacturing Company to retooling for the DE. Let's make sure that that design is finalized before we do that. And I think it is. I don't see any obvious things that I want to change. Do I have any research that's about done that might result in a change of plans? Outside of the fuel consumption, which I think is why I didn't do the retooling, was because we were thinking of potentially waiting until the new fuel efficiency is available. But, you know, in hindsight, I don't think it really matters too much. So let's just go ahead and have Sioux Manufacturing retool for the Acoint, or however the hell it's pronounced. It's French, if I recall correctly. So, you know, I got no clue. And I think the plan was to have three of those for every single mineral or, you know, every single freighter group, which I'm fine with. Now, somebody still has their actives on. Who has their actives still on? They did. Okay, wonderful. Let's turn those off because we don't need them on at all times. Once those are built... How many of those can I build? Three at a time, and okay, that works perfectly for me, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's go in and get time ticking along. Do the usual five-day increments. 30 days will result in it taking forever to progress, so five days tends to, in my opinion, work faster, generally speaking.
I know when it comes to the new freighters, I think we were definitely waiting for the next generation of engines, particularly the more fuel efficiency. And I think that's partly because I want to try to save a little bit of weight, but I don't think it really matters. Like, I could do this. The reality is the, the escorts are stupidly fast for this. But it might be worth it. Because I would love to get these guys up to like 4,600 if I could. Because then they can at least outrun the, uh, you know, the raiders if they ever pop up. But of course, the escorts are there so that if they do pop up, the escorts can take care of it. But nonetheless... It's just one of those, you know, I would love to have these things be able to, at least on their own as well, outrun. Instead of relying on the escorts, sort of either disengaging or, you know, detaching and engaging the raiders to at least force them off. Although because our escorts would be fast enough, they'd be able to catch up and actually destroy them instead of just make them run away. But of course, having the escorts in there will probably dissuade the enemy anyway. So long as the enemy detects them, of course. But let's go ahead and get those built. So, go ahead, construction. We're going to go ahead and assign these initially to the unassigned ship's fleet, because that's why it exists. And I'm going to tell you to use any components that exist, because I definitely have components that you can use. Particularly when it comes... Actually, I don't. Because you only have engineering spaces. And I don't have a bunch of engineering spaces lying around. You don't actually have maintenance storage bays. Yeah, so that's a thing. The maintenance storage bays actually aren't particularly useful to be sitting on. Because I, for the most part, am not really using them much. Okay, no, it looks like everything else does. It's just the destroyer escorts because they weren't a full rebuild designed from the ground up. They were a modification of the cruisers. They don't need it. They're a little bit over-engineered in terms of, you know, their IFR and their maintenance life. But it works fine overall. I could have saved some engineering space, but I don't think it would have mattered too much. Because an engineering space is 50 tons each, so that's only 500 tons. That would have only gotten them down maybe to about 11,700-ish tons to not have all this maintenance life that they don't really need unless they get into a lot of combat and their stuff needs to be getting repaired every five seconds. But yeah, so, you know, use any components that happen to exist, but I don't think I actually have any that are relevant. Outside of the couple of CICs, which is only going to be enough for two of these. But that's fine. Go ahead and create three of those. We're going to have the... Aconet, the Acti, and the Adroit. Or again, however the hell they're pronounced, because they're French. Okay, AI scrapped an old uh, colony ship, I think that is. I think the AI does use C as the designation for colony ships, and F as the designation for freighters. Okay, the next generation Alamos have been designed. Let's go ahead and get our existing ones refitted. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and tell you to add an additional slipway so that I can retool five at a time in the future. Maybe I'll have you do a sixth one just to be on the safe side. I don't know exactly how many I need. That's the main question. Because I am losing, you know, troop capacity per transport. And you can't have troops split across multiple ships. So, yeah. 
And unfortunately, I do not believe that there is a nice, obvious, easy way to tell exactly how much space these guys take up unless it uses the size here, which maybe it does. And if it does, then great. Then it's easy enough. I need 100,000 tons, we'll just say, of transport capacity, which if that is the number used, then I could probably afford to just drop like one of these troop transports. But that'll help us when we inevitably get around to invading the NPR that is seemingly not doing anything that, as far as we know, is based out of Pi Libre. That's the big thing, is that that guy, as far as we can tell, is not doing anything whatsoever. Hey, I have an absolute metric ton of research capacity apparently just lying around now. Fortunately, I really do not have many particularly great scientists for construction pro and production research. My best one, and I think I mentioned it before, is Zhang Long Kang here with 29 labs that he can, you know, put under his belt. The rest of these people, 15, 10, 15, 9. Isaac Collins sucks. He has zero bonus and can only have nine labs. Like, he couldn't even manage to get 10. Let's see. What do I research? So, Compact Electronic Counter Countermeasures 4 is not super expensive. I think we're going to go ahead and say screw it. Go ahead and get that research with Kang Fang Zian here. With 45% bonus. Damn, Kang. Only 16 labs, but you know what? 45% research? Go ahead, buddy. You got that. Although I say that, but then I see Abel Batista down here with 15% and a 30 labs to their name. Which gets you 24,000 annual research points compared to you with 22,400. The reality is it doesn't make a significant difference it's all going to be finishing around that sort of June, July time frame, no matter who I select. So let's go ahead and just, you know, save labs so we can have some other research going as well. And we'll have Kang take care of that one. Let's go ahead and research the next level of engines. And we'll have Gracia here with her 46 labs and 20% bonus. Hot damn. You'll finish that sometime November of some year, about four years from now. Because you're at about 20,000 research points a year and you need 80. But that'll be fine. I can wait four years. You know, I'm in no immediate rush to get new engines necessarily. It's just one of those, that would be nice to have. But the reality is we're probably not going to be doing any major refits with those. Like, we're mostly just lucky that we're not needing to send out our stuff nearly as much. That's the whole reason why their deployment and maintenance lives are not really that bad. They're, you know, they're not sitting out there for very long. So most of them are fine. Um, okay, we are technically missing, what is that, 44 of the size 8 missiles? Let's just go ahead and round that out, because I want a nice even number. Thank you very much, game. So go ahead and get those done. Those will be in, done in December of... I guess this year. So in a couple of weeks. Okay, and we'll be getting the last research lab done in January. And then we can try to figure out what exactly we want to do. 
for getting the next generation of freighters out there. Slipway added to Waller Boat Builders. Who was that one? Ah, oh, that was the one that handles the Abdils. Yes, of course. And how many of those are there again? Nine of them. So how about you add one more slipway? Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up our freighter here. Design tech, engines. Uh, that needs to go down to 50%, and this needs to be at least 25 HS. You know what? Let me see if this thing will actually work this time, because it doesn't always. I want... Come on. I want a commercial engine on a 100,000 ton thing. I want it to have a speed of at least 46. It needs at least two engines, just so it has some redundancy. Um, don't care for that. Desired range. How much range do you guys have? 140. Yeah, realistically, I think 100 billion kilometers is probably fine. Wonderful. It worked this time. Which, you know, is somewhat surprising. Um, also, is this correct? Yes, I do actually have engine size 100. Okay, I didn't realize this. Also, the... Okay, no, that's already on the right... Armor strength, okay. Really? Okay, whatever. Uh, so what are you saying for engine information? You are saying it should be a size 92 engine. And I'm going to have 10 of these. 50% output. Wonderful. Go ahead and company name this, prototype it, go here. What is it? Ten of those. Go here. You don't need any of the maintenance stuff. Okay, and you say three larges for standards. Followed by two smalls and two fighters. Okay, wonderful. Now just to get the cargo where I want it. It's not quite working out. Okay, so I need to get 467 tons removed. And about the only way to do that is remove fuel, which is not what I want to do. Or I can have you guys take longer, not by much, but a little bit to uh, whop out that I can do. Which then gives me 49 tons to play with. But I don't have anything nearly small enough in terms of cargo to be able to get you there. So the only thing I'd be able to do would be either maintenance supplies, just so you have them. Which I guess is probably the best idea. It gives you a little bit over double 
but the maintenance supply points you need to be able to max repair you can literally max repair twice before you need to resupply and you still have a little bit extra Yep, I think this will work. It gets you me to that magical 4,600 kilometers a second that I was looking for, which is quite a bit faster than the existing model. You know, it's like 1,400 kilometers a second faster, which is fairly significant when you're talking about a 100,000 ton ship. You still give me 252 days at full power of fuel. Which is more than adequate. The reality is I'm not going to probably need that much fuel. Like, I don't know how far out I'd be sending you that you would need 100 billion kilometers of range realistically. But I might as well give it to you. So we're going to go ahead and I think finalize this design by saying let's go ahead and research the engine. And also obsolete that other one that we had sort of just been using as a placeholder. And then we come into here and we go to the FTAB Hammond Block 3, tell you to retool for the... Oh, well, yes, I can't do it until I do the research, I forgot. When do I have some labs freeing up? Uh, February. Okay, we finished up with the missiles. Wonderful. Means we can now just be stockpiling Galsite more. Which is always something we need. Okay, research facilities done. Let's go ahead. How much do I have in turn? Well, let's go ahead and you know, give me the ordnance factory done. And then we can do the automated mines. How much crundium do we have? Only 63,000. That's not nearly enough for my liking. Who gives me all my crundium? It's Sysetti B1, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, we have a thousand years until we deplete that, but that's just because we're still missing a ludicrous number of uh, worker-related stuff. Or, well, we're still missing a ludicrous number of workers. Still trying to get that sorted out. Um, how is our colony ships doing? You guys still doing your orders? You are wonderful. The annoying thing is, though, you're only transporting 312,000 colonists a turn, which is not particularly fast. That literally means it takes you guys four trips to do one million, and you need to do, like, seven million right now. So, yeah, that's, that's going to take a little while. That's what, like 28 trips? still right now and each of those trips takes a fair bit of time you know i can't your current travel time required is listing as 18 days uh but i think that's from your current location not from the total time so total time realistically is probably more like 20 some odd days we'll say 24 for a round trip i believe that's correct so yeah you're looking at about a month each so yeah that's all a very very slow process Yeah, that seems about right, because you're already back to Earth. 
Okay, and Owens has already hit the 70,000 number. Wonderful. So if, uh, whenever we get around to deciding to actually implement the Africa, we, uh, we're ready to go. We are ready to go. We're just still waiting for this. Because technically, I still have about 2,000 tons I need to fiddle with on there. Um, the acute seems to be having some serious problems. Well, I say that it's having some problems, at least right now. Maybe not serious, but it is having some problems. <clears throat> um, what is your maintenance looking like? You are sitting at about 1.66 for this deployment and 2.45 for overall maintenance. What did I have you designed for again? Uh, 36 uh, months. So, you know, that's not too bad, technically speaking. You know, that's... Because this should be months, if I recall correctly. That's why the, the freighters go orange at about, like... 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. So, this is only like two months of maintenance and 1.66 months of deployment. So, you should be fine still. Which is good because your replacements are still a ways out. And let's go ahead and put the rest of these labs onto the next generation of engine tech so we can get that just a tad bit faster. Okay, Beckett Systems added another slipway. That's for the Alamos refits. I want you to add one more slipway so that you have five total. Sorry about that, my dog thinks she sees something. And so is Barking. I'm not sure if she's actually being picked up or not by the microphone, though. Okay, wonderful. That engine is done. Let's go ahead and if I can just pull up the right menu for once. Refit Harley Shipyard Corporation retool to the FTAB Hammond Block 4. That'll be done in June. Wonderful. Um, you guys are going to add a slipway as well because that's going to take far too long. Although we're not going to be doing the refits right now. Right now we're going to be just rebuilds entirely to replace Did somebody die while researching something? Why did I have three labs get freed up? I'm not sure why free three labs got freed up. Oh, did the game automatically add? Yes, I think the game might have automatically added stuff to the inertial confinement fusion drive, maybe. And then I still had three left because I didn't have anything else set to assign new. Maybe something caused a two-hour increment. 
Okay, there's our research rate, 600, which is wonderful. That'll speed this up quite a bit. 25 labs available. Let's go ahead and get the next level of terraforming tech. And that actually used up all the labs I had available. Wonderful. Something again caused a two hour increment. No idea what. Might have been an NPR transiting a jump point or something, maybe. About the best thing I can think of. Because nothing else really comes to mind for what could cause a two hour increment like that randomly. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to keep you at 9, even though it's an odd number. It's fine. Now. Um. No, I think the rest of this stuff can stay as it is right now. The rest of the civilian stuff doesn't matter nearly as much as the freighters do in terms of getting them a little bit better. So we can leave the rest of that as it is. Um, actually... So, I just need to double check because I didn't put it in my notes. I think the plan was to look into colonizing Omega SETI. Is that right? I feel like that's a little ballsy, even for me. I don't think I, I'd really advise doing that. FL Virginis. This was a gas world, wasn't it? Or, excuse me, a Venusian world? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, this is a Venusian world. I mean, we can double check that, but it, it's, it's a Venusian world. This is not a good place to go. And it requires automated mines that I don't have available. Because, um, yeah. We just don't have a ludicrous amount of those lying around somewhere waiting to get used. Um, EQ Pegasi is too far away. That's yeah, way the hell out there. That's far too far away from my liking. Uh, minerals, minerals. Well, hide all asteroids, hide all comets, because I don't give a crap about them. Earth, we've already colonized all the best places we could. Yeah, there's really nothing else here on Earth that's worth trying to get our hands on. Alpha Centauri. Yeah, only show me moons with minerals. Geranium, tritium, or excuse me, tritanium, marcassium, no minerals, no minerals. Okay, nothing there. Uh, Cyceti, I think we were already colonized. The stuff that's worth getting. That is, in fact, correct. Bernard Star, we have fair bit of corbomite on Bernard Star 2, but that's about it. The big thing we're looking for is a nice source of... Ooh, that's also a nice place, just for the gal site. But again, shitty availability, because that's just the way things work for us. It's always crappy availability. 
don't care for comets and even though these are like perfectly colonizable worlds they don't have any resources so i don't care to colonize them don't care to colonize that because it has no resources no resources that is apparently unsurveyed and i don't know why Uh, but probably nothing really worth speaking of, all things considered. Okay, let's see. We have Iota Ursa Majoris 2 out here. Fair distance away, which makes defending it a bit of a pain. But it has tons of Duranium, quite a bit of Boronide, Venderite, Iridium, Corundium, Galsite, and it's actually decent availability Galsite, and also, like, you know, above average availability of, or excuse me, accessibility, rather, of Corundium, and damn near perfect Duranium. And we have Epsilon Indy, which is largely unsurveyed, and by largely unsurveyed, I mean is completely unsurveyed. What I am going to do is I'm going to go and create a colony here, because we're definitely going to be colonizing Iota Ursa Majoris, I believe is going to be the plan. Uh, this is a hydrogen-helium world. It is technically a terrestrial, so we could technically colonize it. I may actually need to build a new exploration ship because we still have some stuff out here that did not get properly explored the last time we were out there i kind of figured we could probably ignore that stuff for now but uh, evidently i seem to have been incorrect in that assessment Ooh, tons of uh sorium here on 98 leonis 4 well, I say tons, it's 5 million. That's a, it's not tons, but it is a fair bit. And its moon has a fair bit of mercassium, though pretty bad availability, and a tiny amount of sorium to go with it. Um, and those are just crappy worlds. That is a crappy world. We already looked at Bernard Star, right? Yes. Corbomite there on the world that's damn near perfect to colonize, but I don't really need Corbomite. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, yes, we also have 84 Cancri down here, which is not the worst. Um, we have A1 here with quite a bit of Duranium and a fair bit of Galsite. Again, crappy availability on the Galsite. Easy access to Duranium. The reality is Duranium is not a particularly important resource to us, generally speaking. Uh, we got a Venusian world here with crappy availability, but tons of Duranium, Neutronium, Corundium, and Galsite. More than enough to probably justify the cost of the automated mines to build there. And because 84 Cancri A1 is not a terrible world, what I could theoretically do is <clears throat> use 84 Cancri A1 as basically a storage depot. Like, I could just use mass drivers to move all of the minerals from uh, B1 to A1 and then pick them up all, all at A1. Would save me a little bit of fuel, potentially. Because I wouldn't need to be flying to both worlds. But the reality is, that's a ton of mass drivers that I would probably need to, you know, actually keep up with the mining production that would be necessary for B1 to be worth colonizing. So... Yeah, what we're going to do, I didn't think it was going to be necessary because I thought we had done an adequate job of exploring stuff, but evidently we had not, is that we are actually going to go ahead and reconsider our exploration efforts.
So this is going to be the block three of the Abel Tasmans. Now I need a new engine to go on them, and it needs to be a military engine. So the question is, what engine do I give them? Because the current one is a little slow for this, unless I want to give you guys a commercial engine, which, I mean, I could do. It's a little too heavy for my liking, though, I think, generally speaking. And then I'd have to redesign the jump drive, which may not be the worst idea ever either, just because it's an outdated jump drive, like we're talking near the start of the campaign level. Yeah, no, I'm just going to give you nine of those. That's fine. Nine of our best of the best military engines. And then we can go ahead and fill out the remaining 2,000 tons with fuel. And I'm going to give you... Well, that's three years. I think I might have said it was two years or something when I was looking at the uh, escort carrier. That's my bad. It is not two years, it is three years, because this is months, so 12 months in a year, 36. So this is three years worth. We technically have four years of maintenance life. Um, so I could realistically probably kick this up to like 42 and not have any real issues. And it would at least keep you out there just a tad bit longer. While we haven't really kept up with our jump drive tech for the simple reason that we haven't had a real need to, I am curious as to what our new one could be designed for, because we do have a higher jump drive efficiency. That's the big thing. We do have a higher jump drive efficiency. I'm pretty sure, right? How big is the current one? Current one is for a 40,200 max. Which is not a number that I can actually achieve. How heavy is it actually? It is... 6,700, thank you. Yes, yeah, so this would have been a jump drive efficiency 6 engine. I can achieve basically the same max ship size and shave about 1,700 tons off of it. In fact, I can shave exactly 1,700 tons off of the weight, which would allow me to slap even more fuel or um, maintenance storage and things like that on here, which I'm kind of inclined to do. Yeah, we're going to do that. So we're going to have the... Lion's Marine new jump drive go on here. We're going to obsolete that component because it is very much obsolete. And then I can give you more engineering, like I said. I want you to have an under 3 IFR if I can. Well, 3 works as well. And then that leaves me with 1,000 tons that I can either do for fuel or more maintenance supplies. So that gives you up to 6 years of maintenance supplies. So I'm going to go and kick you up to 48 months of deployment time.
would it be possible for me to get you to technically do a five-year mission with 60? Wonderful. Not that you have anywhere near the ability to carry that much frickin' fuel, which is where the question comes in. Do I design another new engine for you? Because it might be worth it to design a new engine for you. Uh, how does this compare? This is slightly less fuel efficient. Same capacity, but quite a bit faster. However, because this is being a special thing, what I could do is cut this down, make it just as powerful in terms of engine power, but a fair bit more fuel efficient because the fuel use per hour goes from 90 liters down to 68. Which I think is fairly significant. And I think we're going to do that as well. So you have nine of these engines. How about you have nine of the new ones? That gets you to 454 days at full power. Let's go ahead and remove your existing fuel storages. So we can start from scratch on this. Small, not tiny. 484, that's nowhere near enough fuel for a five-year mission. So I guess we're not doing a five-year mission, which is kind of a shame, because that would have been kind of nice. Could have literally gone all Star Trek with you if you could have done that. So we'll just do a four-year mission. It's fine. You know, it's, it's still a, a valid option. It's just, it would have been cooler. Whoops, adding that large gets you just a little bit over. Five hundred and sixty six days. That's like still not over where I want you. I guess I could make you a bit slower. That's kind of fast. You're literally approaching fighter territory on the speeds. So we can go ahead and take you down to seven engines, six engines. It'll be about 800, well, we'll see once I actually get your size back up to the 40,000 number. Um, actually, I can use a couple large fuel tanks to get the size necessary. Okay, 5100, which does technically make you a bit slower. But I think I can also probably remove some of these maintenance storage and that'll help a little bit. Well, yeah, part of the thing is that your the new engines are just straight up lower power. So that's not too surprising. We'll give you seven so that you're faster. I'll shave off the 2,015 tons that are necessary. Okay, that gets you to a little under 6,000 kilometers a second. 
over 1100 days of fuel, which I, you know, exactly how does the uh, math work out on this one? Because it's not a nice even number to work with, which is what I always shoot for, as I've noted before. So that gets me about three years of fuel. So realistically, it's three years and some change. So we'll take that back down to 36 because you technically aren't quite over. That gets me an extra 300 tons to play with again that I can go ahead and slap a little bit of extra fuel on. Gets you to 133 days at full power, which again is, you know, around about-ish three years, give or take. It's like 37 months. So, you know what? I think this works. This is the design we're going to use. It's not significantly faster but it gets the job done a fair bit faster still while being able to stay out for longer without as much of an issue. So we'll get those researched as soon as we have the opportunity and we will be then building another exploration ship. Probably just the one, I think, realistically. Okay, and the A.B. Hammonds are done. We're not going to actually build those right now, though. So I probably could have held off on, you know, designing it, but whatever. Well, not designing it, but at least, you know, getting the retooling done. I kind of expected the escorts to be done a little bit sooner. Um, but partly also because I didn't note it exactly what the plans were. We need to kind of formulate some stuff. Or, well, not formulate, but reevaluate some stuff go ahead and slap that on your queue um also because we just got compact eccm for the africa can swap out its excuse me it was eccm4 not ecm4 I don't currently have compact ECM4 because we don't have ECM5. And until I research ECM5, I can't get compact ECCM4. Yep, that's how that works. Okay. I was not paying attention to what we had researched and whatnot. I can uh, correct this in the future, of course. Oh, also, you don't use the improved damage control. You use the advanced damage control going forward, Africa. It's better. By how much, I don't know. But it is better. So that's what you're going to use. Oh, we finished the ordnance factories. Are you still paused on the automated mines? You're not. Wonderful. Go ahead and finish those off. Or is it finish those off? I don't know. Okay. Okay, that was the one for the Alamo. How many of those do I have again? Is it five or six? I completely forgot now. It is five. Okay, wonderful. That, that works. That allows you to be able to do refits all at once in the future when it comes to these. Not that you're going to be doing any more. At least right this second. Still waiting on the destroyer escorts. And ship build rate 2100 is still waiting. Do I have somebody else I can put on that now? Or are we still waiting? Wait, did the guy... No, did my dude who was really good at it die? I wasn't paying any attention. Nope. He didn't die. He just decided to retire now. 
July 5th, 2144, Zhang Long Kang retires from government service at the age of 63. Thanks, Zhang. That was the perfect time to retire. Because I could have put you onto this, which would have sped up our research significantly. Because we're only doing 15 labs with a 10% bonus. Or 12,600 annual research on a tech that still has 140 some odd thousand research points remaining. I really need to get ourselves a secondary planet with an academy so that we can put a science person in charge at that academy. The question becomes, who do I place in charge? Do I actually have anybody? Okay, yeah, no. Yeah, Justina Sandy here is still in charge of the academy on Earth. Do I want to maybe build a, an academy on the moon? Not too far away, but it's fine. Makes it easier to transport my stuff. Yeah, let's do that. This is going to be the first foray of the new Hammond Block 4s because I'm going to be building some of these. Unassigned cargo fleet. Use any components that exist. And I want you to build me two of them. While you're doing that, add a slip away because I think I want three each for these fleets. Those will be done sometime in December. Okay, the Austin finished its refit. Also, technically, some of these things are requiring additional crew, which means I should probably actually double check that everybody has the crew they need. Especially if you've done a major refit. Um, annoyingly, there's no nice, easy way to just check the uh, crew size requirements to see if somebody has all the crew they need. Which is a slight annoyance, if I'm being completely honest. You guys are done. But yeah, annoyingly, there's no nice, easy way to be able to just see that, okay, yeah, you guys have all the crew you need. You have a total crew of 3,395. Great, but is that all the crew you need? Is the game at least nice enough to grab all the crew? I think it is, which is great. Now, let's, uh, let's double check some stuff. So you guys have 186,000 troop capacity available. Also obsolete that. This has 37,000 each. If I'm correct in my assessment that the, tra the transport requirements is just this number here, I could safely remove two of you in theory and still have a fair bit left over and thus shouldn't run into any issues with not being able to fit everybody. Because again, you can't split individual units across multiple ships. So it's always a good idea to have a little bit spare just so that you can, you know, not need to worry about this.
So what we're going to go ahead and do, I think, is we're going to go ahead and have the Barber County and the Austin break off to form their own group, which is going to go under the reserves for now. At some point, we will actually build a second fleet, like an actual second fleet. But we haven't had a need to because the only um, attacks we've been under have been the raiders. Neither of the actual NPRs that we have met have done anything. So, no worries there. While we were doing that, my timer went off, so we're going to go ahead and end this part here. I will, I will see you all next time. Quick reminder, if you want to stay up to date with the channel, I highly recommend you join my Discord server. That is my go-to place for posting about that kind of stuff to be able to keep you all updated on changes to my schedule and the like that may or may not occur. With that out of the way, I will see you all next time. Until then, glory to the Republic, and until next time.